let's look at the theory for the loaded test tube experiment. In this experiment, we are trying to find the density of water using the loaded test tube. Okay, so when you watch the part one of the video, you know how that one is done. This section, I'll try and then take you to through how this theory or the Archimedes principle can be proved using this experiment. So we'll be making use of the Archimedes principle to be able to find the density of water for this experiment. Okay. Now, the first thing that we can see is that we know that density equals the mass over volume, right? Now, coming down here, we can also see that the radius of the test tube is r centimeters. Okay, so we need the radius of the test tube. Okay, that was immersed in the water, and then the mean depth of immersion in centimeters per gram is n. Okay, so let's say d equals to n. So we can say that this is the mean depth of immersion, and then they are saying that one is equals to n. So we should have this in mind. Okay. Let's keep this in mind. We will have to use it as we go on. The next thing that we do is that we have to find volume, okay? Because we said in the first equation, right? We can say that volume, density equals to mass over volume, meaning that we can find the formula for finding volume and then we can insert it in this, okay? So now let's see what the manual says or what the book says about how we can find volume now when we come here right when we come here they are saying that then the slope now continue with this this one tells us that into bracket where the n is the slope of the depth of immersion against the additional load okay so we can also see that this same d equals to n is also equals to the slope so as i said we might use it again so we will keep this in mind Okay, now continuing, it says that when we continue from here, we can see that they said then the volume of the liquid displaced by the additional, by the addition of one gram to the test tube equals to this, right? Equals to this, right? Okay, so now we can insert this because they say the volume here right in this equation we can replace this with this volume then we can just compare to equation of a linear motion then we can now find the archimedes principle which can give us the density of water by making density rho the subjects okay so i will see how that one is done as well okay so let's have this also in mind that the volume v so the volume of V equals to pi r squared n. And then the unit, the unit is centimeters cube. Okay, so V equals to this. Now, let's see how that one is done. So we can call this equation, right? Remember this equation, we can call this equation one. Okay, now they are saying that our volume, right? This volume is also this. Let's hold on with the unit, okay? Our volume equals to this. Now we can just put the unit here, okay? This is our volume. And then also they were saying that the depth of immersion D equals to N, if you remember. And then also in the same book, when we come to the back, we can see a very nice formula here, okay? We can see a very nice formula here that the D equals to x minus x naught into brackets. The d equals to x minus x naught. So we will plot in a graph of d equals to x minus x naught as ordinate and then m as abscissa. Okay. So when we continue, when we continue, what we can do is that we can just put this equation right here. Then anywhere we see v right so this is the same as rho equal to mass over volume so we just replaced volume with this okay now when we make when we 
we place volume with this or we place volume with this all we will do next is that we have to make this equation linear okay so that because we are trying to plot d which is the depth of immersion against m now we have m here and we are planning to plot d against m so after making this equation linear what we have to do is that we have to make sure we include d in this equation but how how do we include d in the equation how do we include d in the equation okay now we can say that what we can do is that we remember that they said from the other side they said that d equals to n and then the d is the same as the slope right equals the slope also our d equals to also our d equals to into brackets x minus x naught okay so what we will do is that anywhere we see n in this equation we can just make n in the subject here right we can call this equation 3 and then make n the subject in this equation so when we make n the subject here we'll get this expression here we get this expression here when we make n the subject then after that we can replace n because we said d equals to n so we can replace n with d they will have this expression so is this this is the same as this because this is the same as this d equals to n so what is here is the same as what is here okay now what we can do with that is that now we can just factorize out our m because we are trying to plot d against m don't forget d equals to don't forget our d equals to x minus x naught okay x minus x naught and then we are supposed to plot we are supposed to plot d equal to x minus x naught against m okay so from here from here we can factorize m out right from this equation so that we have an expression like this you realize that when we have a plus a b over b this is the same as uh, let's say this is c right a b on c this is the same as a b a on c dot b right this and this are the same okay so that's what we did here so this and this are the same if you understand we just factorized m out okay so that we can plot the d where the d equals to our x minus x naught against m now with this we can now compare this equation to the equation of a straight line okay y equals to ms plus c in this situation our intercept is zero okay if you understand our intercept is now zero okay so what we do next is that we can just define the parameters now our d equals to our y on the y axis and then our x equals to big m and then everything in front you see everything in front of our m is our slope okay so after plotting our graph so now everything here is our so this is our y component okay when we are comparing this to this equation this becomes our y component this is our s component our plus c is zero the intercept it means that tells us that our equation or our graph is a positive graph okay because there's no intercept it doesn't cut through in that intercept okay so we are expecting to get a graph like this okay meaning that anything in front of our x component this is our x component anything in front of our x component is our slope so our slope equals is it this okay so from there now we can find the density so after plotting our graph after plotting our graph okay when we get our graph then we can find our slope so we plot d here so this are d we plot it here where d equals to x minus x naught and the unit is centimeters and then we plot our mass on the x axis okay so from there what we do next is that we find our slope from the graph now after finding our slope right we have to find the radius of the test tube as well because it's needed so we, we we spoke about it in the book that we have to get a slope of the the radius of the test tube okay so assuming assuming our radius the radius of the test tube r was found to be let's say 1.7 centimeters right now we just insert r here right and then you see from here we said that our slope equals to this and we are finding density of water okay 
So once we have the answer for the slope, and then we know the answer for this, all these are constant, we can find P. So what we do next is that we make P the subject, which is the row. We make row the subject, which is the density. When we make row the subject, we just insert the value of the slope here, and then we insert also the radius of the test tube here. Then we can find density of water using this experiment. And then we can apply this in any other liquid that we want to find the density for. Okay, thank you very much.